Online Summit in Barcelona and we met here with Ganesh Swami who is the CEO and founder of Covalent, a unified API for all blockchain data. Nice to meet you here, Ganesh. Thanks, Anna. Excited to be here. So can you tell us how did you get into crypto? How did you start your journey in this industry? Sure, great question. So it's quite accidental. So I've been in the database, big data space for about a decade and a friend of mine told me, uh, go check out this blockchain stuff and uh, I just showed up at a hackathon uh, built like a like a like a middleware connector ended up winning that hackathon and that project that I built at the hackathon is today covalent so it's quite a, a weekend uh, accident that I'm in this space oh that's quite interesting which year was it this is a long time ago so 2017 so at the peak of the bull market uh, it's when I uh, did the hackathon yeah, so just the idea was created as the hackathon. You didn't have any plans to get into no. So stuff. so I've been in the data space for over a decade, and uh, for enterprise adoption, there are certain things that are required. And so my vision was that uh, for blockchains to be adopted for consumer and enterprise use cases, you still have to get the same kind of properties. So I just built this simple like toy experiment, uh, but our timing uh, was uh, not great because after we started a company, Covalent, uh, there was the multi-year bear market. So 2018 and 2019, there was nothing going on, uh, but it was a good time for us to just sit down and build the core technology. And uh, you started from supporting Ethereum blockchain, so currently which blockchains uh, does Covalent support? Yeah, we started with Ethereum because that's where most of the activity is. And mm -hmm. for Covalent to be useful, the data has to be on the blockchain. Uh, today we support 32 blockchains, mostly EVM compatible blockchains. So uh, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, uh, Clayton, Optimism, Arbitrum, uh, Avalanche of course, the C chain, uh, soon enough all the subnets that are EVM based, um, the uh, Aurora Labs, like they have a, a EVM chain on near protocol. Uh, any EVM chain with traction is of interest to us. Uh, and uh, uh, you uh, have now a DAO. Was it started as a DAO first, and did, or did you transform the company to DAO later? We transformed it to a DAO. So about two years ago, the uh, Covalent started to see traction. Developers started to use the unified API, build applications. And at that point, you know, the, there was like a question, do we take it as a traditional company, right? Build mm -hmm. like for profits, build for this, or do we take it to a public good and then do something great for society? Mm -hmm. And uh, taking that path was harder, a lot more challenges from a legal, from a financing perspective, but we chose to do, uh, take it down the DAO path because I think this is an opportunity for us to create something great for the whole world, right? Not just for Covalent, not just for the employees and the mm -hmm. investors, but the entire uh, Web3 space. So that's the, the reason. And what is the role of uh, governance token in your DAO? So Covalent is a data middleware protocol. Mm -hmm. What that means is that it indexes different chains and uh, exposes that data through a unified API. Mm -hmm. So what governance can do is tweak the parameters of the actual network. So what, uh, what in a networks to index next? So there was a proposal on Harmony uh, blockchain recently that went, that went through. How much fees we should uh, charge for the different uh, blockchains? Uh, what are the latency parameters? Uh, basically the whole governance on how this indexing protocol works is uh, based on uh, governance, what the token holders uh, wish. And uh, what's your business model? Are your customers developers or other blockchains? How does it work? So Covalent is a two-sided marketplace. We have the supply comes from the blockchains. Mm -hmm. So we have these partnerships with these blockchains like Avalanche uh, to index the chain. And then the, the core product is used by developers who use it uh, to build applications. Mm -hmm. Today there's over a thousand applications on all of these blockchains and 25,000 developers use the API. So it's a quite a big ecosystem. But the product for the developers is completely free. We don't mm -hmm. charge a single uh, cent for that and we charge the, uh, the blockchains themselves to provide these indexing services. But once the decentralized covalent network is, uh, is live and operating, then these two sides, they will just uh, do matchmaking mm -hmm. and they will find out what their transaction fees are. So until then, you know, the, the complete network is subsidized. And anybody can create API on Covalent since you have a Covalent marketplace. Can you tell more about this? It's a great question. So this is an exciting feature that is shipping later this year. So, so far we have class A and class B endpoints. And these endpoints are all created by the employees of Covalent, so internal staff. 
But really what, what has happened over the past couple of years is that the number of protocols has just exploded in this space. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of protocols. No way for our, our team to manage and index those, those protocols. So the class C endpoints is where anyone can come and contribute endpoints to the covalent ecosystem for any protocol on any blockchain. So that is coming later this, uh, this week. So we think of it as consumption or contribution. So contribution can come from the blockchains, you contribute data, or if you're a developer, you go build uh, an endpoint. And when other people query that endpoint, you as a developer, you as a creator, get a portion of the query fees. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell for which uh, use cases uh, do you provide uh, APIs? Uh, now, for example, NFT, gaming, uh, quite booming. Yeah, so primarily there are four use cases that uh, we target. And, uh, but the API is general purpose. Think of it as a can of tomato sauce and some pasta, and you can make lasagna, you can make whatever dish you want. So it's really up to, uh, the, it's very flexible API. So the primary use cases are uh, the wallet use case, so in the wallet use case, we are best in class. Even on the Avalanche Expo Hall, uh, about half the companies, uh, half the project out there are using Covalent. So best in class, like the Rainbow Wallet, mm -hmm. uh, XDeFi, Frontier, uh, all of these guys are using uh, Covalent, so the wallet interface. The taxation space is another big space for us. So all the big players there use Covalent for their taxable events because you have to pay taxes on like your trades, right? We are also big in the NFT space. So the Binance Marketplace, the Aave Marketplace, NFTX, lots of great projects. Mm -hmm. And here you want to look at a person's wallet, figure out you know, what assets they have, you know, what is the floor price, all kinds of like investor tools. So these are primarily what the use cases are. But if you look at the long tail of use cases, which is you know, the majority, you have DAO tools, so DAOlytics, Boardroom, and so on. Uh, you have you know, uh, trading apps, you have liquidity providing mm -hmm. tools. Uh, you have like uh, Uniswap analytics, one inch analytics. It's just a long tail is this thing. It's hard to keep track of, but it's general purpose blockchain uh, data. Mm -hmm. And actually some uh, people compare uh, Covalent to the graph. Can you tell about the differences? Yeah, so on the surface, both the graph and Covalent are decentralized indexing and query protocols. Mm -hmm. So they're you know, the same category of software. The difference is in the, in the technology, the architecture and the philosophy. So in the case of Covalent, we provide a unified API. Mm -hmm. So all the data across all the 32 blockchains is one interface, right? So it's very unified. So a developer just needs to learn one, and then they can use all the underlying uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. In the case of the graph, it has something known as a subgraphs, where a developer no needs to go and write uh, an indexing strategy mm -hmm. for a specific protocol. So now you have you know, uh, a subgraph for Uniswap, a subgraph for SushiSwap, a subgraph for one inch, mm -hmm. and they're all very different interfaces. In Covalent, everything is unified. So that's the key difference. And the second big difference is that uh, the Covalent decentralized protocol is a, uh, is a, is a proof-based data pipeline. Mm -hmm. What that means is every step along the way, you can verify that the data is valid. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't rely on uh, trusting people, we don't rely on trusting centralized parties, We've outsourced all of that trust to mathematics. Mm -hmm. So if the mathematics and the cryptography don't match, then there's like fake data or data corruption. Mm -hmm. So that is the key uh, difference between the graph and covalent. But both are you know, great projects uh, mm -hmm. and uh, more, more projects in the Web3 space, everyone benefits. Yeah, of course. And uh, do you have any plans to launch your ecosystem funds? Like for example, the graph has their own too. Absolutely. So, uh, what we've been uh, very successful in is we're able to uh, track the data of these early projects in uh, like you know new uh, networks like Aurora or C Chain or subnets. We recently released a book on GameFi. It's an 80 page book on just data analytics for the GameFi space, right? So now we can actually put strategic help to provide uh, these projects, not just with capital, but also analytics and traction and go to market, the whole package. So that's what the ecosystem fund will be, and uh, you'll hear news on that later this year. And so uh, what are the challenges are you facing? So the number one challenge that we have is uh, scaling. Mm -hmm. So Covalent has scaled dramatically over the past uh, two years. So just to give you some context, uh, summer, so September 2020, uh, we were just three people. 
Today we are a team of 60 people. So you know, massive growth in 2021. We only had 50 developers in 2020. Now we have 23,000, 24,000. So massive growth there. Oh, Number of projects. Yeah. So everything is just like uh, you know exploded. So mm -hmm. keeping up with the, the growth rates is the biggest challenge. But I think this is a, a good problem to have. It's just very frustrating right now because you're working super hard, mm -hmm. uh, but it, we can never keep up with you know how much demand there is for covalent. And what is in your opinion needed for mass adoption of crypto or DeFi? Absolutely. So I think uh, the number one blocker is regulations, right? Mm -hmm. So companies like Covalent, it's not, we're not saying that we're not going to follow regulations. All we need is a clear outline on this is what we need to follow. And no one is giving us that guidance. So I think that is the biggest uh, challenge. So uh, once we have that, then you know, a lot more people will be comfortable with the idea. So right now it's just a gray area. It's not legal, it's not not legal. So you don't really know. So the confusion is where you know people cannot invest in it, right? Mm -hmm. But once you have a clear uh, regulatory environment, I think uh, mass adoption will just come. On that note, just uh, today I posted a chart on my Twitter handle about the Avalanche C chain traction. Mm -hmm. uh, this month, in the month of March, Avalanche uh, the C chain crossed two million wallets that has uh, paid gas. So it's showing you that the traction is there. The traction is growing. Uh, it's going to take time. There's a lot of pieces, moving parts. Uh, do you see it still uh, growing despite uh, the downtrends of the market? So prices go up, prices go down, right? Builders will keep building, right? We started the covalent in 2017. 2018, 2019, there's no price action. There's no, no DeFi, no NFTs, but we can continue building. So I think uh, builders will keep building. And if there's a downturn, there's a downturn. It's not a big deal. I think uh, what has happened is there's lots of capital in the, in the space right now, right? Tons and tons and tons of money. So the companies that are actually building, there's no challenge. I don't think we'll see a bear market like 2018, 2019. If we see a correction, it's a correction. I think it's a healthy correction. It's not a crash. And prices will go up, prices will go down. You know, you can't really control that. But you can continue building. You can continue envisioning the future. And uh, I think that Covalent was named like uh, Google for blockchain data. So uh, what's, what's the highest mission of Covalent? So our goal is to organize all the blockchain data in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I think today uh, uh, systems are not super transparent, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at any kind of system like politics or uh, vaccine numbers or mm -hmm. election numbers, nobody's transparent. Everything is, is fake news. And so if you put all of this into the blockchain and teach people how to crunch these numbers, then I think society will be uh, taking a big step forward. So that is the overall uh, vision. So in the next, uh, Covalent is a decade long project. So it's going to take multiple years to uh, see this vision to completion. So that's really the high, high level objective of Covalent. That's great. And uh, actually, uh, Covalent has such uh, long-term goals and uh, quite a big vision. But as for the token, it's still, uh, I think, uh, it's some kind of popular in top 500, but still uh, like uh, not, not uh, popular to that extent. And you have like trading volumes uh, on, like uh, about $1 million. So in uh, your opinion, what is uh, needed to bring more attention to a project? So absolutely. So it's a great question. And I think the focus has been entirely on the product, on the mm -hmm. API. So uh, that's been our biggest uh, mission uh, in the past year. Uh, in all fairness, the token is only out for like six or seven months. So it's mm -hmm. still a baby when it comes to the, the you know, utility and getting traction. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of uh, things coming down the pipe, which should be very exciting. First thing is the launch of our staking, so single-sided asset staking. So the decentralized covalent protocol is launching next month. And there, uh, token holders can now uh, deposit uh, against the staking protocol and earn a yield So to secure the network. So that will suck out, I don't know what the numbers are, 20%, 30%, 40%, 35% .30 of the circulating supply. So that'll be the staking program. So that is you know, uh, pretty exciting. The second thing is CQT is only on Ethereum today. It's not on any other chains. So to do even a simple transaction is like $15, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So our mission for this year is to take Covalent onto multiple chains. Mm -hmm. So we are, uh, we'll bring it on Avalanche, we'll bring it on Polygon, 
on Binance Smart Chain, on Moonbeam, all the different chains. And then we'll have liquidity to mining, then we'll have custody, then we'll have you know, DEX liquidity, and all of these chains. The supply of CQD is like the schedule is known. So when you move it to all these chains, there'll be more transaction volume, there'll be more liquidity, there's more action. The final piece here is matching the traction on the API, the billions of API calls that are made, the thousands of developers that rely on API, getting them access to CQD and you know, moving the token through the network. For that, the network has to launch, so that's coming up. So uh, we are taking action. Uh, Q2, starting Q2, a big uh, focus for us is launching the staking program and uh, bringing more liquidity, bringing, bringing everything up on the token. So that's a, it's a big focus for us. That's interesting. We'll follow your updates uh, and uh, good luck uh, with the development. Thanks for your time, Anna. I really enjoyed this chat. <laughs>